and see the screen. We can get started. Looks like we're all here. All right. If you um, want more information beyond what we go over here today, because we only uh, we uh, never never enough time, you can always attend one of the workshops. There's the link in the chat. All you do is click on that. And uh, for most people here, you know, you would probably, unless you're brand, if you're brand new to trading, you would go to the uh, beginner workshop. And if you have experience, you would go to the advanced workshop. And both of those, um, where that leads to is spending a week together in the markets. So let's take a look. And we're going to look at one screenshot and then we're going to spend the rest of our time in the markets, uh, live markets, applying our supply and demand strategy. And for those that are new to this, you know, we've been, uh, I think I've been doing these FX street sessions for many, many years, and uh, it's always the same strategy, always the same simple rules, and it's basically focused on how the markets really work, which is just pure supply and demand. And um, I started my career on the trading floor of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange many years ago, the late 90s, and uh, mid to late 90s, and that's where I developed the uh, supply and demand strategy there and then moving on to screen based trading but basically my job on the trading floor you know I started on the professional side of the business working on a trade desk right outside of the trading pits and my job was to facilitate order flow from banks institutions money managers you name it and retail traders and investors just trading from home and it was, you know, so having access to the market's real supply and demand allowed me to really understand how and why prices turn and move in markets and how money is really made and lost in markets. Uh, all I did was then um, plot what that picture looks like on a price chart. And that's where we get the supply demand strategy. And that's what we go over here. And we'll continue to do that. So taking a quick look, quick look at this week and how we applied the strategy rules. Notice here uh, the screenshot on the left. This is uh, one of the morning sessions. So I deliver a live morning session each day uh, before the markets really get going. And here we focus on identifying uh, market turning points in in the major markets, right? So applying the supply demand rules here, we were looking at the S and P. We had demand or wholesale prices here, supply or retail prices here. All that's really happened this week is price has gone uh, started down uh, right here, gap down to our demand zones, and then. Uh, right late last week and then rallied uh, this week rallied right up to the supply zones okay that's uh that's how markets work right buying at demand selling at supply selling at supply buying at demand that's how you make money at this one of the big things you need to understand if you're new at this is that how you make money buying and selling anything in life is exactly how you make money buying and selling in the markets Right, demand or wholesale prices, supply or retail prices. We know anywhere else we buy at wholesale, sell at retail. That's what we do here. One of the things I want to point out is notice we chose this demand zone going into the week. Uh, we had this last week also. Why is that? Well, we had to get below this candle right here, the pivot low here. Right, we had to get below that to keep it um, fresh and high probability. Notice sitting just below this pivot low is our demand zone that also has a gap with it. Why such a strong move right here out of this area? Looking at the SPY, it's with a gap because the conclusion is that there's such a large supply demand imbalance right here. Okay. Ah, yes, Sam Bragg, uh, I see in the chat there. Yeah, we definitely want to get the stop below the low. And speaking of that, 
The other thing we don't we don't talk about too much in these FX Street sessions. We'll certainly cover it in that workshop. I actually delivered some of those workshops. I might uh, so, uh, but anyway, the entry stop and profit target. It's a very good idea. I mean, we 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 everything we do is rule based, right? So you know, this is all about trading what's real, not what you feel. And the more you can just make every decision a rule, uh, and eventually you get to a point where there's just no thinking. You're just applying your strategy rules. Okay. So we always get in just before the level, and that's very defined. There's no thinking. Um, where our stop goes is always, again, uh, it's based on a rule, and that's below the demand zone. And then our profit target is always, uh, again, that's a rule too. So in this case, or any case, it's typically a percentage of the available profit zone, which is proximal demand, uh, the proximal demand line here to the proximal supply line. So for some of us, we choose 80%. So whatever that number is, that's the exit. Okay. But I, I highly encourage you to set and forget the trades once you get this and know what you're doing and understand the risk and all that. And also make sure that everything is a rule. We'll cover some of that in those in those uh, those workshops too, but um, very important there. All right, so whether we're trading the S and P like you see on the screen here, the SPY, or uh, any other market, FX markets, stocks, futures, forex, options, bonds, cryptocurrency, real estate, doesn't matter. It's all the same strategy, all the same rules, right? It's just people, supply, and demand. Those are the three things we have in all these markets. All right, so let's go to the live markets. I can always go to uh, look at any market you like. If you have a favorite market or a opportunity you're thinking about and you want to take a look at it, just type it in the chat. Otherwise, I have a whole list of markets and um, we can uh, certainly have a list of spot Forex markets here since we're here with FX Street, but we can look at any market. And Tommy, we can absolutely start with gold. Are you um, are you talking about gold futures or GLD, the ETF? Which would you prefer? And again, we apply the same strategy rules to all these markets. GLD, let's take a look. So we had uh, GLD, and I believe uh, we went over this last time in these FX Street sessions, I believe this gold level. So as many of you know, Gold ran into our supply zone up here, where it then turned lower and began to head down to demand. On the way down, this market created another big footprint of a significant supply demand imbalance right here. Currently, GLD, uh, the ETF for gold, is sitting at 167. A uh, little bit lower, we have a demand zone here, 162.75, but uh, below that, a higher probability demand zone right at 160 okay so this is the higher probability zone down here uh, and then we have a lower probability demand zone sitting just above if we do get a rally first we would expect gold to stop rallying at the 173.50 and turn lower this is the current uh, the recent and relative profit zone right here okay All right, let's keep going. Um, we can look at other charts of gold, but that's really the one that um, gives us the uh, the evidence that we're looking for. So we could probably move on to another market. Yep, we can look at, uh, yeah, gold futures are not gonna be all that different, but we can certainly take a look. Right. So don't forget in the larger time frame, right? We've been playing this. I know we've looked at this chart. You know, gold has that larger time frame supply above that it keeps falling off of. And now we're kind of settling out, you know, somewhere in the middle. But um, where is, hang on a second. Um, we did have this demand zone below 1750. We're not there yet, but we're kind of hovering just above it. Some secondary evidence back here suggesting a decent supply demand imbalance there. And then I know we had 
There's another chart to look at for gold. Let me just find it. Uh, no, not that one. Yeah, there was that supply zone. I think some of you took this, right? Didn't we? We went over this one last uh, couple sessions ago. It's the same one that we just looked at in GLD. Yeah, okay. All right. Good job. So, um, again, it's the you know same supply demand zones here as in GLD. So, watch for those demand zones below. Um, we're now closer to those than we are the supply zones above. And that's really it with uh, gold. Sure, we could take a look at copper. So copper in the um, in the big picture, always good to take a look at that. The blue circle means this is a this is a zone that uh, or this is an area that's developing. It hasn't qualified to be a supplier demand zone yet. Um, but let's take a look. So uh, this is one of the zones that we had in our morning sessions, but we've already rallied off that. So we would not use this demand zone again, uh, but you can see the supply side is fresh up here. Okay. You see how there's a, you see this demand zone right here, or, or what I should say what looks to be a demand zone right here, right? Some people might look at this and say, oh, there's another zone. Let's take that. One thing you need to be careful of when you see see how the demand zone below it worked out fine ultimately but you see how deep price went into the zone see that so when you see that a demand zone at a at a lower price like this price went so deep into the zone before it rallied you probably don't want to take the zone up here because what it's telling you is at this price level right here you know, there was enough of a supply demand imbalance to cause prices to turn. But barely because price went so deep into the zone. Uh, again, therefore, there's not likely to be a bigger supply demand imbalance or even equal supply demand imbalance at a zone that's higher. Does that make sense? That's kind of a key piece because because one of the one of the one of the. Uh, I should say the biggest question people have is why do some zones work and others don't? All right. Uh, let's keep going. We can go to some spot FX markets, but again, if you have other markets you want to take a, you want to take a look at, um, just uh, put it in the chat and we can take a look. Otherwise, I'll start to, no problem, I'll just start to run through uh, our list and we'll look at some spot markets. All right, why don't we start with the euro? Uh, yep, we can look at the dollar in just a moment. So let's uh, let's start with the euro though. And so after the turn, uh, actually the two declines from the supply zones above in the euro, We have um, an area below where the chart is suggesting demand likely exceeds supply. This is the 11818 area sitting just below. And then when we look at the um, hang on a second. Oh yeah, so yeah, again, with this demand zone below, on the supply side, we'd be looking at the origin of the most uh, recent drop up there. Uh, banks likely are likely big sellers up there at the uh, 121 area, and uh, buyers down here at the 114.18 area. Okay, so that's the Euro. Looking at the dollar, so this is a market we really focus on. So those morning sessions, uh, you know, the dollar is one of the most important markets we look at each day for a number of reasons. One, uh, the dollar is just a great market to trade, but uh, two, 
when we look at any most other major FX markets, we we absolutely want to know where the dollar supply demand zones are, right? And then when it comes to equity index markets, the dollar is a key inverse market to equities when they both reach opposing supply demand zones at or you know really close to the same time. Yeah, so and and then of course similar, you know, same thing kind of with the commodity markets, right? Energies, metals, all that. So it's very important that we focus on the dollar. And if you know it's it's funny, if you go back many, many, many years here in these FX street sessions, it's the dollar that we've you know focused on the most for those reasons. All right, so looking here, we just turned lower at our 9230 supply. By the way, if we end up going higher, we have another supply zone up here. We haven't put these lines in yet just because we've been so far from this. But I think we're getting close enough. So this is really 92.85 sitting right up here. Okay. And then on the demand side, right, we just came off a big weekly demand zone. So we're kind of in the big picture rallying from the demand zone best seen on the weekly, you know, to the supply zone best seen on the daily chart. Clearly banks are buying and selling in those two, uh, at those two areas. Uh, but there's more. Let's take a look. We can move to some smaller time frames here. And let's do that. Okay. So don't forget we've gone over the the 93.40, and while price uh, has already touched this zone, uh, the 9340, the fact that it just touched it and fell means we would use it again. Okay, so if the dollar, for example, you'd want it to go above this high. So if the dollar traded 93.50, that would put it right back up into the fresh part of this zone. The bottom of it is not fresh anymore. And there we would look to either short the dollar or, you know, buy uh, FX markets against the dollar, look for demand zones and equities, right? Which there are some. Okay. Here's a, a zone sitting uh, kind of just above that. Uh, I'm sorry, not just above that. Uh, smaller time frame. Uh, this one's okay. This was a little bit lower probability. That's why it's a gray box. Remember, at the Pinnacle Institute, we color code our supply and demand zones based on probability, right? So a gray zone is going to be lower probability than a yellow zone. And everything we do is about structure and location, the structure of a supply demand zone, and then the location of that supply demand zone. So let's look at another one and I'll, I'll start to um, dive a little deeper into that. Let's go to, um, let's see if we have, nope, we didn't have anything there. Okay. So for example, this one, um, this would be for a shorter term a trade possibly, but uh, just like this demand zone we had on the bottom, we look at the supply zone on top. Structure-wise, it's okay. Very little trading, strong drop away, it's fresh. Location-wise, it's not great. Right? The fact that we have trading uh, below and above the base and so much of it just prior to the, the zone itself uh, suggests it's lower location wise it's not great so we're always looking at structure and location to number one determine does a does a supply demand zone even qualify because most do not qualify and then number two um, is is it high probability enough in other words is is it is there a uh, big enough supply demand imbalance there you know that suggests it's very likely that price is going to turn yeah, Tommy, and drop-based drop, you know, you got to be careful. Remember, the majority of drop-based drops, for example, in a market are not going to work. Just like the majority of rally-based rallies in a market are not going to work. And you're going to have tons of them, but the majority are not going to work. Um, we need to make sure that they have 
we need to apply our rules and make sure that they have a large enough supply demand imbalance uh, that suggests that that's the one where banks are buying you know, or selling. Okay. But that's why it's always that combination of structure and location. Let's take a look at, let's keep going. Ah, silver, yeah, we can look at silver in just a moment. Okay, let's take a look at uh, the pound. Uh, looks like this one already hit, so it's why I kind of wanted to go here next. But anyway, the pound just hit our four hour supply zone. And when we look at the demand side, again, this uh, about the 136.80. We've already been here two times, but but again, look at how price just touched the level and turned. So we don't care all that much about how many times price comes back to a level. We care much more about how deep price has gone into that level. Same thing with this one down here. Now these are gray zones, which means a gray zone, like I said before, means good structure, poor location. Okay, good structure, poor location. All right, so we would we would take actually both of those again, but let's keep going here. So let's also look at this chart. I believe there's a supply zone. Uh, if you're looking for a fresh, a fresh zone above the current range, which is higher probability, we'd be looking at the 14155 area. Okay. All right. Yep, let me just look back. So silver, we can definitely go to silver. So let's take a look. We will go to silver futures next. And here it is. And here we're going to go to a couple different time frames. We'll start with a four hour as soon as this chart comes up. Okay. So you can see in the four hour we've gone from... Um, our demand zone down here is fresh, right? The 2447. We then turned lowered our supply zone. We then developed a little footprint of demand here, which, you know, price kept bouncing off this level and turning higher. Probably at a three to one here, a two to one here, maybe another one here. And now we're through that zone. So the next uh, possible stopping point is going to be the demand zone down here. Um, another demand zone, so that's 2447. Uh, whoops, not there. It's on the 60 minute chart. I believe we're looking, oh, this is the same one. So that's at 2447. Okay. And then, you know, you can see where silver's at. In the uh, in the big picture here, right? When we look at the larger time frame, notice these are yellow zones. So yellow zones are the highest probability zones we have, right? Okay. Uh, but obviously, we're not close to those. And yeah, on the demand side, it's really that that level I, I keep showing you. Um, and then the supply side, this is probably the next stopping point up here. The zone I just showed you is not fresh anymore, this one. So we've gone too deep into that zone. So we would expect prices to go through that area. Okay. Yeah, so not we wouldn't we wouldn't trade at that supply zone again. All right, let's keep going. Uh, yep, we could certainly look at Bitcoin. We cover that uh, quite a bit. So we just had a, a zone that met entry a few days ago. And that was this one. Uh, I believe we went over all these last time we were together here at FX Street. So this was the 39.165. We kind of hit it a couple times. Um, if Bitcoin goes higher, you know, this, this level still is not traded through. So you have to be careful buying. You really don't want to, any demand zones you take, even on smaller time frames, we need to be careful until this, this whole supply zone here is taken out. Then the next move would be up to the 48.8.
So, but don't think prices can't first head down to the 25, 745, the gap demand down here. Okay. Remember, this is the area we've been talking about that we're expecting prices to get to. Okay, real quick look at, um, I don't think there's a closer zone, but let me make sure I'm correct. Yeah, that's it. So it's that gap demand below and then that, uh, that supply above. Okay, just looking back in the chat, looks like there's uh, some people want the yen. Why don't we start with the yen spot? You can always go to the futures if you want to, but let's start with the yen spot. All right, there's a bunch of, ch bunch of charts to look at here. The yen has really been moving um, and turning uh, really nicely at all these supply and demand zones. Remember, when I say supply and demand zones, I'm talking about the ones that qualify, right? Most do not qualify, okay? So let's start with the larger time frame. So there's the uh, 420 minute chart. This is the last turn uh, at uh, demand here. We would use this level again. Banks clearly buying at uh, this demand zone, right? We have that secondary evidence here. And then uh, and then prices came back here and turned higher. So we'd, we'd probably, you know, there's probably enough of a supply demand imbalance here to cause another turn in price. Okay. And then uh, that demand zone, hang on. Let's go to the 180 minute chart for the supply side of things. And unfortunately this one just hit kind of over, uh, over the last day or so. But notice the shallow move into that area. And again, the secondary evidence attached to this area. So that suggests there's a good size supply demand imbalance up here. One that suggests big enough that uh, another move up into this area, price is likely to turn lower. So um, we'd wanna see probably a new high into the area though. Like get above 111.10 before thinking of selling. And again, the, uh, the demand side is uh, the demand side is down here. Okay. Uh, let's look here. I think we might have another supply zone to look at. Um, let's go back a little bit. Uh, no. All right. So uh, those are your supply and demand zones in the yen. Yeah, you know, Owen, it's um, it, it's a process. So first, you know, you start to look what we do when we built uh, the Pinnacle Institute, we wanted to build, you know, we only wanted to build it if we could, you know, really make sure that people that go through the program have the best chance of success. And we thought, you know what, taking a, just taking a class and then just going and doing it, that's that's not enough. So we built a skill building process that has three parts in it. And I think these three parts, whether it's, you know, you, you, whether you go through it with, with me or anybody else, it's, it's the three parts are prepare, practice, and perform. Prepare is the education, right? Prepare is the classes. Uh, then after that, we have a middle part called practice. And the practice sessions are not the classes they're after the classes where you go in and you know you really um, you're practicing finding supply demand zones really testing your skills um, you know multiple choice questions chart setups to kind of trick you make sure you really get it and then after at practice when it's time to perform and now you're risking your hard-earned money in the markets you should be surrounded with tools and resources that hopefully give you the best chance of success. So however you're doing it or, or what have you, try to focus on those three things. You know, when you learn it, make sure you learn it the right way. And then don't just jive in and dive in and start trading it. 
practice, 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 and make sure that the results of your practice, you know, tell you that, scream at you that, yeah, you're great at this, and and now go start risking uh, a little bit of real money, right? But don't but don't jive in before that. Um, all right, Tommy, yeah, that's that's great about your eighty percent uh, win rate. Um, well done. Well done. Okay, so you must be taking zones kind of outside the range, higher probability zones, right? And Tarek, you know, for someone who's brand new at this, <clears throat> that person tends to understand this and get it a little bit quicker. For people that have a lot of bad habits and have been doing the wrong thing for a while, it takes a little bit longer time typically, not always, but typically for that person to sort of not unlearn, I don't think you can unlearn anything, but to just stop doing what they're doing and start doing it a different way. You know, if you play sports, it's like trying to change your golf swing or trying to change, I don't know, whatever your sport is. It's not easy, right? It takes time. But it all depends on how committed you are also, okay? Yeah, there, yeah exactly, Joe. You know, it's also why too, you know, we, these morning sessions, yes, we give our members, we, we hand them the trading opportunities, right? All of that. But we also try to make these educational. So, you know, as you're learning anything, it's good to have someone kind of holding your hand in the process. Does that make sense? All right, let's keep going here. So again, if you have another market that you want to take a look at that I haven't gone over, let me know. Otherwise, I have a, uh, still have a number of markets we can go through. We can go up to the equity index group if you want. We've been looking at quite a few, um, quite a few FX markets. So the NASDAQ and the S&P futures, we didn't have any supply. However, if we go to the, um, there's some decent zones in the bond markets. But uh, yeah, let's take, I'm just saying that because otherwise you were just wrote in the chat. Let's take a look at the Dow though for a minute. So the Dow, um, looks like the Dow is hitting one of our zones right here. Uh, just hit it. Okay, so we just hit the 34,070 mark, fell a little bit and um, sitting just below it. So there's that zone right there. And then I believe, if we take a look at the Dow here, um, well, it's not there yet, but we have a supply zone. It's actually a touch higher. I don't know why this line is down here, but. So now it's up at the origin of the drop in price. So the, uh, basically 34,165. You know, so while the NASDAQ and S&P are like either at or making new all-time highs, the Dow and the Russell, or the Dow at least, has been struggling even to get back to supply. And the Russell, same thing to a lesser extent. So here we have um, some likely supply above, 34,165. And then uh, on the demand side, we're looking at 33,000 uh, and about 40. If we go over to the European markets, like DAX and FESX, Okay, let's take a look at those. So let's look at the DAX. So after rallying up off our demand zones here, notice we're right in the middle of this big range. But having said that, we're uh, this week, we went into this week with a, like the Dow, we had a supply zone up here, 15,665. Notice just a couple days ago, we came, or was this yesterday, we came very close to touching this level, but couldn't. We call that secondary evidence because it's uh, strongly suggesting that there's a big supply demand imbalance up at that zone. Okay. And then looking at FESX, um, the Euro stocks 50, we have that same zone that we should be getting closer to. So same thing, some secondary evidence up here, suggesting there's such a big supply demand imbalance up here, price couldn't even get there. Uh, but uh, we do need to rally a little bit more to, to make it up there. Now, 
Remember, we just looked at three supply zones in equities. We started with the Dow, then the DAX, then FESX. Um, a general rule for us is we, we never short the equity index markets with full position size. Typically, we're looking at half position size at most. And that's because the, the equity index markets are designed to go up over time. So be very careful, and it's, it's okay to skip supply zones and equities, right? It's okay to skip them. Um, uh, because there's also plenty of, plenty, of, uh, plenty of good demand zones. For example, if we go to, go to the NASDAQ, which again, it hasn't uh, given us a, demand, a supply zone in quite a while, we have a new demand zone. I know it looks far, but we were pretty close to this two days ago. Uh, we have a new demand zone down here, 14,168. Uh, and then if we go to the Qs, which is the ETF for the NASDAQ, if you want to trade the NASDAQ like a stock, okay. If we go to this chart right here, we have a demand zone that's not too far below current price. I mean, it is now, but it wasn't as of the last day or so. Uh, the 340, 450, and we're likely to be back there sooner than, sooner than you think. Remember that we, you know, we had big news from yesterday to today in the financial markets with uh, in the United States. The the big uh, spending bill is you know going to pass uh, pretty quick here. So, uh, but once that's done, you know your your uh, price. It's taking prices pretty far from demand, so you're likely to see a pullback. You know, shortly, shortly after that. Okay. So, um, I know we're about out of time here, but again, if you're interested in uh, joining joining me, for example, in these morning sessions for a week straight, live in the markets, and uh, we cover you know stocks, futures, forex uh, in these sessions, then um, yeah, you can always. Um, you can always join the workshop. Whoops. And uh, actually, I can put the link in the chat. There's the link if you want. So if you start, if you start with the workshop, and um, uh, Tom, you know, I was in the last two workshops, so you gotta. Um, sometimes I am, but the other, the the other guy that does them, he's fantastic. Um, but it, but once you go through the workshop, then you end up in uh, these live sessions for a week. So um, we'll see some of you there. If not, we'll see you back at these. Uh, at the FX Street sessions, and uh, we'll just keep moving forward um, uh, here. All right, have a great day, everyone. If you have any questions, just uh, let us know. Excellent, Joe. Good to see you. All right, uh, we'll see you next time.